spacecraft actually enabled people to see the surface in radar and to find thousands of features that had to be named. And so the International Astronomical Union had a field day coming up with a nomenclature convention for the planet Venus where everything uh, has a female name, uh, except for the one feature that could be detected before the spacecraft got there, which was named for James Clark Maxwell. But uh, everything else has a woman's name. And I'm happy to tell you that there is a volcano on Venus that was named for Galileo's daughter. And uh, the Earth is a planet. Uh, this is this is fairly recent news, only about 500 years ago. Uh, and the discovery of the Earth's place in space uh, and the study of it, uh, which of course continues today uh, with the new vigor, uh, has been the most interesting story of all. And we realize we are responsible for this beautiful planet. We really need to take much better care of it than we have. <coughs> the moon chapter is about lunacy because everybody knows people go crazy after the full moon, or so they say, because the light of the full moon is so stunning and beautiful. And um, this chapter uh, enabled me to tell a true story uh, about a friend of mine who was in love with one of the astronomers working on the Apollo samples. And he gave her a small quantity of moon dust. And I was so thrilled when she told me that. I just about jumped out of my skin. Of course, I wanted to see it. But um, unfortunately, she had eaten it. I don't know. I don't think I would have done that. Uh, but maybe that's why I gave it to her. Uh, so this is, there are lots of fun things in here. One of them being a, a moon garden. A moon garden contains either flowers that are white or flowers that bloom at, at, at dusk. And uh, there's also a little Apollo temple there with uh, images of the lunar landing module on the top, the faces of the moon. Crashing into planets and setting off uh, 
debris streams from their surfaces so that uh, pieces of the moon, pieces of Mars, pieces of the Earth get exchanged. And uh, scientists go to look for lunar and Martian and asteroid meteorites in Antarctica because uh, they're relatively easy to spot there. Uh, nothing happens to them while they're lying about, and uh, they look very different from the ice. So there's been a program going on for more than two decades now, uh, specifically going out in snowmobiles and hunting for meteorites. And this particular uh, uh, meteorite from the Allen Hills raised uh, global awareness because it seemed to have in it evidence of some kind of fossil life that was not Earth life. And uh, there are still some people at NASA who insist that the evidence is incontestable, um, but others continue to contest it. Uh, so there's the Earth in the distance, uh, an impact is set all of these rocks moving fast enough to escape the gravitational pull of Mars, and then they're just adrift in space for thousands of years. And if they happen to come close enough to Earth to get pulled down to our surface, that's what happens to them. Most of them wind up in the ocean. Uh, or if they uh, land somewhere where there's a uh, but anybody's ever had a Martian meteorite crash into a car, a house, although I guess some lucky people have collected meteorites that way. This is an old idea of what Mars looked like. Uh, Percival Lowell believed Mars was inhabited by a race of intelligent creatures who were dying of thirst because the planet had they exhausted their water. And so they were building a network of canals. And always I find it very interesting that Lowell was looking at Mars very shortly after the completion of the Suez Canal. <coughs> and so he had canals on his mind, and he saw this lattice work of straight lines, which very few other people ever could see. Um, looking through a telescope is an art, or it used to be as much an art as a science, and not everybody saw the same things. And uh, Lowell lectured all over the world about this and about the uh, hapless Martians. But we now have a new image of a very wet Mars, thanks to the wonderful robot explorers who are there now, uh, spirit and opportunity, roving about. Um, and now this uh, latest picture I showed you earlier, that there, there really is a lot of water on Here's a little artistic license of ALH 8401, those warming looking things in it. And Jupiter checked is about astrology because uh, Jupiter is the planet of the greatest good. You have Jupiter well placed in your name chart, that is a good thing. And uh, I have taken tremendous criticism for talking about astrology in this book. I really had to think hard about this at the beginning because Carl Sagan was a mentor to me and spent much of his life actively fighting uh, ideas, pseudoscience, especially astrology, and wanting people to understand that if they craved a connection to the universe, they should realize that 